Hello all, my name is Krish Naik and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, uh, as you all know, Generative AI, Agentic AI right now is the talk of the town. There are amazing LLM models that are coming up where cost is also getting reduced and recently GPT-5 has also come up from OpenAI. Today in this particular video, I want to definitely talk about one amazing report that is 2025 AI engineering report. And this report will actually help you to understand where you should really focus on this particular field because this field is quite how, a vast in short. And many people whose aim is specifically to work in this particular field by getting a job, they want to make a successful career transition. So definitely this report is must for everyone. This video will be somewhere around 10 to 12 minutes. So please make sure that you watch this particular video till the end. It will give you an idea like what things you should really focus on in perspective of AI, uh, how you can really create a meaningful impact in companies, how you can get the most benefit out of the specific report itself. This report, if I talk about, is being surveyed by many, many people who are working currently in this particular field itself. So quickly, let me share my screen over here. So this is the 2025 AI engineering report, and this has just come in the month of June. But this report is having so much of information that you should definitely have a look onto this, okay? And the main reason for making this particular record is that because my audience are focusing on learning multiple things, specifically where they should really focus on in generative AI or agentic AI. What should, what is the kind of work that companies are actually doing? That also you should definitely know. So if you see over here, why this report is important because they have surveyed hundreds of engineering building in AI about everything from which models they are using to whether they're using a dedicated vector database and all, right? So if you see, there's some very core important points out of it that for customer facing application, three out of top five and half of the top 10 most popular models are from OpenAI. This I can definitely say because uh, I've spoken to many, many people who are in industries, companies and all. Um, when they are specifically developing RAG application, OpenAI is definitely the most popular models that have been used. Apart from that, Cloudy from Anthropic is also being used extensively. 70% of the respondents are using RAG in some form. Now, this is a very important statement because I've already told, I've done multiple LinkedIn posts and I'm focused on saying that two kinds of applications are being built more and more. One is definitely RAG. The first priority work is RAG. Everybody is trying to automate their specific workflows, uh, automate task by generating this entire agentic AI application, integrating RAG in between them, right? So there are so many different types of RAG applications from traditional RAGs to agentic RAG to most different varieties of agentic RAG like autonomous RAG, you have self RAG, you have adaptive RAG. So many different kind of RAGs are definitely there. So for people who have still not explored RAG, definitely go ahead and explore right now. I've seen in interviews, many of my students have attended interviews recently. The kind of projects has been asked in every interview is related to RAG, okay? How you can actually build a RAG application, what all things you should basically use in order to build a RAG application, what should be the entire life cycle from data ingestion to data parsing till deployment, how you should really go ahead with this. More than 50% of the folks are updating the model at least monthly. So over here, when we say are updating the models, I think they are also performing fine tuning, okay? Audio is poised for major adoption wave with 30%, 37% of respondents planning to use it soon. So audio will also be integrated in all this kind of workflows that we are specifically using. The majority of agents in production have write access typically with human in the loop. So you should also learn this particular concept that is called as human in the loop itself. Okay. With respect to the demographics who have been surveyed, you can see software engineers, AI engineers, founders, management, VP, CEO, CTO, MLO, MLOps engineer, researchers, product managers, others, and data scientists. Okay. And here you can see percentage of respondent by years of experience, like zero to three to 10 plus years of experience. In AI ML, you can see people who are having good amount of experience or who are building software engineering because now AI is also getting integrated with software engineers work, right? Because at the end of the day, they are building the same application where AI really need to be there. Okay. Right now, the change is only constant, even for the veterans. Okay. Model basics, why, what are people actually building? Here you can see 
right? Where is Gen AI deployed to production in your workplace? They're using LLMs for both internal and external use cases, it seems. They're using internal tools, external tools. They're using a combination of internal and external tools. Nothing in production yet, but planning to be soon. There's some percentage that are not in production, but they are using a lot of things, okay? Along with this, uh, what are your primary use cases for LLM? So here you can see code intelligence and generation, writing assistant content generation, text summarization, structured data extraction, workflow and app automation, search recommendation, customer support, metadata generation, sentiment analysis, fraud and threat and detection. But maximum you can see many number of use cases are built over here. I have personally spoken to people who are working in the top four uh, best companies like like uh, top four uh, companies like ENY, PwC, KPMG, they're all building this kind of applications itself. Okay. Which LLMs are you using for customer production? You can see OpenAI, Anthropic, as I said, right? OpenAI is the top most used model, but Anthropic Cloudy is also doing really amazing work. Specifically, if I talk about Cloudy 4.1, right? Opus, uh, Sonnet, they all are some amazing models. Okay. Uh, one more very important thing about RAG I really want to talk about is that, see, here, how are people actually interfacing with all these models and customizing them to their use cases? Uh, basically, to, uh, typical few short learning plus prompting, the overall answer is RAG. 70% of the respondents say that they are using RAG in one way or the another. So you can just understand how important this RAG use cases is. And with respect to use cases, you can see the top three, few short learning, RAG and fine tuning. Fine tuning, they're specifically using LoRa, Clora methods. So here you can see that methods are also there along with parameter efficient methods. And this is basically done to create chatbots or applications that are specific to a company. That is why you actually use fine tuning. Okay. And how often you update your model? 70% of folks are updating their prompts at least monthly and one in 10 are doing it so daily. Just imagine this. Okay, how often do you update your prompt? So th these are some very basic and important information. And out of this, you can also see this very important thing, which is like top app building frameworks. So definitely, if you see in my Udemy courses and all, I have definitely focused on Langchain, Langgraph. So that is basically in the top. Other than that, I've explored Llama Index, Guardrails, I've explored DSPY and all. These all are very good. And probably soon I will also be uploading videos related to it in my YouTube channel. Nowadays, I'm focusing in my YouTube channel only to develop crash course, which will be a longer video form so that your learning process also becomes very much easy. Okay. Other modali modalities include audio, image and video. So I think this will probably take time with respect to multimodal itself. Right. So this is just one type of information that I really wanted to give because this will actually help you to understand how things are going ahead. They have also focused on monitoring and observability. In Langchain, you definitely have monitoring approach. Guardrails is there uh, if you're probably seeing this, right? So just go ahead and have a look onto this. But my main aim to specifically talk about over here is that everybody from managers to senior managers to professionals to developers now, I think it's time that you should start integrating or think like how you can use generative AI and agentic AI in your day-to-day -day work. Because the capabilities of all this kind of applications are huge. Okay. When I talk about uh, things like how it has evolved from past two to three years, how we have gone from machine learning to ML ops to LLM ops, now generative AI, genetic AI, everything is so much in a very speedy manner because companies are building things and that is how we should definitely learn things. So I hope you like this particular video. This was it. A quick video of around 10 minutes, I guess. So just go ahead and have a look onto this and just read this particular report whenever you get time. So yes, this was it from my side. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.